There's a lot of buzz around self-driving cars, but autonomous driving technology could revolutionize a different industry first. Everyone's talking about self-driving cars, and rather than starting the 51st self-driving car startup, what if we apply that same idea to a more tractable use case, which we believe to be construction? Unlike cars functioning on city streets, autonomous tech is at a point where it can be safely integrated. Construction sites are more systematic and controlled than public roads are. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know I come with that video just to make you think. Now guys, if we go back to the 2008 crisis, what did it do? It moved all the money over to a few hands. Also, guys, it helped move in technology. And one of those technologies was what? Bitcoin. Also, we started to see automation move forward. Now that we understand the fourth industrial revolution, we see how the New World Order planned all of it. So in 2008, of course, they created the problem. We know they created the housing crisis, giving anybody loans. Credit was no good. They still gave. We know Warren Buffett with Moody's was rating uh, F paper as A paper. But the fact is, is what happened, guys. Trust broke down. The people lost trust in the actual system. And that gave the rise to Bitcoin. Not only that, guys, we had technology moving fast right behind it. Now we're going to go through a stage where we're going to see 60 to 70 percent of people displaced out of work. So what is the government going to do? What is the New World Order going to do? They're going to retrain these people to work with these robots. The only problem is, guys, that these robots are learning like humans. So just like I state all the time, this is going to take humanity out the picture. That is the end game, guys. Remember, the New World Order, problem, reaction, solution. Remember, everything is planned out. Enjoy the video. First of all, what, what's behind this latest leg hire? Well, thanks, Kelly. It's uh, great to be with you guys. Um, I'm minded to think about a conversation I had a few years ago uh, with Kevin Walsh, who you may know formerly uh, with the Federal Reserve, mm -hmm. and a friend to us here at CoinShares. And uh, he made a prophetic statement to me at one point when he said, you know, the door to crypto was opened uh, by the 2008 quantitative easing program. And he went on to say that the future of crypto would be determined by how we unwound that QE program. And uh, while both of us contemplated that over a cocktail, neither of us could have conceived that uh, QE would end up tripling, not unwinding. So now, uh, you know, and largely due to uh, the, the global pandemic, uh, Bitcoin's entered a new era. Uh, it is driven by the narrative and the drive for inflation resistant investments. Uh, it's driven by digitization because Bitcoin is a digital store of value and because people are looking for that. And it's driven a bit by the, uh, the fact that people are now a little bit more accepting of the volatility. Uh, and that's come about partly because Bitcoin's volatility has been steadily declining over the last few years, um, but probably also by the fact that the volatility of other asset classes has proved to be a lot more volatile than people expected. Yeah, fair enough. Danny, let me ask you, we now have projections of Bitcoin going to $50,000, $100,000. So on the one hand, you have people who want in uh, for that ride. On the other hand, well, relatedly, you have all these institutions now which think, you know what, I, we've got big name investors who say it's not insane to have exposure to this stuff. And we're going to put a few percentage points of our portfolio in it. Uh, is it replacing gold, uh, you think? And, and do, you ha do you game uh, around in kind of these predictions of what Bitcoin could ultimately be worth? Well, there's uh, there's never a lack of um, bold predictions for uh, the price of Bitcoin. Um, but let's just, you know, take a look at the, the overall environment at the moment. I mean, sentiment is electric. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I was minded to see the recent conversation between, um, between the former Bank of England Governor Mark Carney uh, and Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock. Um, and I would describe this as a conversation between two Bitcoin deniers, one of whom was coming to his senses 
Uh, and it was Larry Fink who was pointing out the just enormous interest that BlackRock had been uh, established, had been, been sensing over its uh, social channels and websites. That's one uh, one you know demand pull uh, effect that's going on. Uh, companies uh, like Square, like MicroStrategies, like PayPal are outperforming the market because they are going public with their exposure exposure to Bitcoin. Um, a coin shares, you know, we've done research showing that, you know, 4% allocation to Bitcoin in a traditional balance portfolio, and it has some very interesting performance and diversification benefits. You know, we've seen market wizards, <clears throat> as you mentioned, like Sandra, Camilla, Paul Jones, Jim Simmons, Dwight Anderson, um, all um, becoming you know, interested in this in this asset class. So, so yeah, there is, um, there is definitely a narrative at the moment uh, Whereby that this so-called this sort of perceived career risk of having Bitcoin in your institutional portfolio as a portfolio manager mm -hmm. is fast migrating into a career risk for not having Bitcoin uh, in your portfolio, and that's uh, that's a really stunning uh, development. I think that is perfectly well stated. You know, you're not going to get fired uh, anymore if you had some Bitcoin, but you might get fired if you didn't. And that's a powerful thing. You know, trillions of dollars turn on that uh, distinction. Danny, for the U.S. dollar to be less relevant, uh, the U.S. And, and so, and I'm not certain. I'm not talking about for Americans. I'm talking about for international holders of dollar-based assets. The question I would raise. And, you know, maybe in another time, Mark and I could talk about it. Does it change the need for dollar reserve as a reserve currency if there was a true digital currency that was uh, that was separated uh, from from dollar based assets and other things like that? So many questions need to be answered before I could say is it real and alive. But it certainly has uh, created a lot of imagination, a lot of interest, and it certainly has the potential to evolving into something real. I'll leave it at that.